everyone, my name is Rayane Pereira de Araújo, and today I will bring you the clinical case in thyroid section of submandibular angiolipoma associated with a patient with von Reichenhausen disease. Next. These are my cultures. Next. This work was supervised by Professor Ricardo Eugenio Varela Ares de Mello, who is the head of the oral and maxillofacial surgery and traumatology service. Next. I am a dental school student at the Federal University of Pernambuco, Brazil. Currently, I am an intern at Ambulatory of Maxillofacial Surgery and Traumatology Service in the Clinical Hospital of the Federal University of Pernambuco, Brazil. Be a member of the project to care for patients with oral disease and face traumas and the project in thyroid prevention and treatment of cancer in face and mouth region in Venturosa, Pernambuco, Brazil. Also, we use traditional Chinese medicine in the treatment of patients with temporomandibular disorder. Next. So, angiolipoma is a benign tumor clinically similar to lipoma, but its degree of vascularization is much greater when analyzed microscopically. It's formed by mature adipocytes and vascular elements. About 50% to 20% of angiolipomas affect the head and neck region and it is estimated that only 1% to 4% of this affect the oral cavity. Next. The etiology of angiolipomas remain clear, but hereditary and endocrine factors, traumas, and infections have been postulated. On physical examination, angiolipomas usually ascend the subcutaneous nodules uh, of adipose tissue. Next. So, neurofibromatosis is an inherited condition that has no gender or race preference. The most common form is type 1, also known as von Recklinghausen disease, which is characterized by a mutation in 17.q.11.2. Next. The National Institute of Health has identified seven important components of von Recklinghausen disease. One, presence of cephalite spots. Two, two or more cutaneous neurofibromas or more than one plexiform neurofibromas. Three, frequent in the axillary or inguinal region. Four, optic nerve glioma. Five, two or more lichen joints, pigment iris hematoma. Six, distinct bone lesion, mainly sphenoid and tibial dysplasia. Seven, a relative primary grade with type 1 neurofibromatosis according to the foreign goy criteria. If the patient has at least two of these criteria, he or she is diagnosed as having von Recklinghausen disease. Next. In these pictures, we can see the mean con clinical manifestation of von Recklinghausen disease, <laughs> such as multiple plexiform neurofibromas, Cafel light spots, lichen jaws, and the presence of pigment iris hematoma and frequency in the axillary region. Next. Cafel light spots usually appear in the first years of life, increase in number and size over time, and might become larger as the disease progresses. In addition, lichen jaws and axillary or inguinal frequency are considered pathognomonic of von Recklinghausen disease. Other signs can be evidenced as well, such as microcephaly and such tattoo. The present work aims to report a clinician of a patient with neurofibromatosis type 1 who presented an angiolipoma. Next. Male patient, 36 old melanoderma, attended to the oral maxillofacial surgery and traumatology service of the Federal University of Pernambuco complain of increasing volume in the right submandibular region. Next. During the anamnesis, we observed that the patient had multiple plexiform mass. Next. Presence cephalite spots. Next. 
He also had lichna jaws present in both eyeballs, characterizing von Recklinghausen disease. Next. Clinically, the lesion was well-defined, soft to palpation, mobile, and painless. So we opted for the surgical procedure on the local anesthesia. Next. Initially, infiltrative anesthesia was performed with the anesthetic prilocan with vasoconstrictor. So after a vertical incision and devotion of myocutaneous tissue, resection of the lesion and suture with five zeros mononide thread in separate stitches. During the surgery, it was observed that the lesion uh, had a red color and was very well delimited, being easily detached from the muscle and adjacent adipose tissue, and his postoperative period was smooth. Next. Macroscopic examination of the surgical specimen revealed appendiculated was a limited of piece of soft tissue red in color measuring three by two centimeters. The surgical specimen was a mess in 10% formalin and sent to the pathological anatomy unit of the Hospital das Clinicas of the Federal University of Pernambuco, where the diagnosis of the angiolipoma was confirmed. Next. The histological slide stand with amatoxylin and elzin showed a well demarcated proliferation of mature aripocytes and evidence of the high degree of vascularization. Next. The neurofibromatosis type 1 is an autosomal dominant genetic disease, resulting from a defect on chromosome 17. It has chronic progression and can appear at birth or manifest later in life. Your patient reported that he had the signs and symptoms of neurofibromatosis type 1 size in childhood. So in von Recklinghausen disease, the incidence of the oral lesion is estimated to be about 10%. It's with rarely than in other regions of the body. The most affected region of the oral cavity is believed to be tongue of presenting with nodule and unilateral lesion. You are presented a case with angiolipoma in submandibular region. The differential diagnoses are lipoma, fibrous hyperplasia, fibrolipoma. lipoma. Histological examination is necessary to differentiate it from other cutaneous lesion. There is no relationship between submandibular angiolipoma and type 1 neurofibromatosis in the literature, which makes your case infrequent. For this reason, our patient showed you undergo a dental clinical evaluation for diagnosis and identification of the possible complications. Next. There is currently no cure for type 1 neurofibromatosis and its treatment for resection is a function of preparation that compromises the aesthetic of the patient. The treatment was presented favorably in relation to the case. It's of paramount importance that the dental surgeon is aware of the characteristics and signs and symptoms of a von Recklinghausen disease to establish a correct diagnosis. Both in patients who already have a disease and the symptoms at a risk developing it. In the present case, the patient most of the clinical signs found in the literature and thus it was possible to conclude the diagnosis of von Recklinghausen disease. With this, it's possible to institute the follow-up of this patient, thus avoiding grading complication in the future. Next. This